today we're doing a, something a little bit different. We're doing a modder spotlight. My first guest on our modder spotlight has over 130 mods on the Steam Workshop and we're gonna ask him some questions and see if we can learn some more about modding and if you're interested in modding, seeing how we can uh, uh, how we can get you into modding. So, allow me to introduce Guvenoren. Yo, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything is cool. This is a first. I was a bit surprised, you know, and I got invited for an interview, but it's, I think it's going to be cool. I was actually really excited. Yeah, me too. I, I had this idea very late that night and I uh, uh, thought, this is great. I'm going to uh, wake up everyone at the office with instant messages now. <laughs> so let's start uh, with some, some background. So how, how did you get into making mods? Okay, so when I started getting into mods was like when I was like a real peasant for Total War games. Like when it's like <laughs> you're like an avid user of mods, you've been playing it for like over hundreds of hours. Like I have like what Total War Warhammer, I've like what six thousand hours in total. Mm -hmm. So I've been like really like plowing the hours on these games, and I'm like you know when you have put so much hours into one thing, you just want to add something new to it. You want to have something to like just come back to. The DLCs work really well. But sometimes you just want to, I mean, you have the workshop, you have a library of like community created content. So you just want to add, keep adding things. But but then there are just some ideas that just doesn't exist. That, And then you're just like, oh, but what if that exists? What if it was like that? But then you just sit there like, I mean, I don't know what the mod. So then it's really easy to just kind of like lean back and be like, ah, I'm just going to leave it like that. But. I got an opportunity when I was um, like playing Total War Tilla, like really bad, <laughs> really much <laughs> back then. Then there was this guy uh, named Agress who was making like a lot of reskin mods. And then uh, I was like, I don't know, we started chatting and I was like, hey, you know, I can, I have like a lot of time on my hands. Uh, I'll help you up with some, uh, you know, reskin ideas. Because, I don't know, I just wanted to give it a try. And it seemed really easy at the time because you had <laughs> have this variant editor yeah. program on assembly kit. So then I was like, oh, well, that actually looks kind of easy. It's like actually pretty like, you know, good interface to start to do, pumping out some variant ed, like variant meshes, like reed skinning. So then I started like doing my very first mod was 2000, back 2015 was for the Western Roman Empire. And in my opinion, it looks atrocious, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know. That was the first one. I was really proud of it. And then I was like, just like, you know what? I still have a lot of time on my hands. I'm just going to keep on grinding out these mods. So I was like, just going like seeking all days just had nothing better to do and they just <laughs> kept doing these reskins and i just kept uploading i did my own hun one i did the white huns when they got released and then i even did one for eight of charlemagne when i was saying like you know what i'm gonna make a reskin the very first reskin that does every faction for age of charlemagne and when i did that it took me like what a few days it was insane like i sat like <laughs> nine hours on these few days it's like pumping out as much as I could on each each of these factions that was for Age of Charlemagne. And then I just set it out there. And I was, the f I think, to my knowledge, I was the first one that I managed to do a complete reskin for Age of Charlemagne. Wow. Well, I was really shocked when I, like, I thought it was like in the following week that another YouTube channel actually featured that mod. It was the first time I was ever featured. <laughs> or I just flew out of bed and I was like, Mom, look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just wanted to get something more out of what I had and that's pretty much the reason why I pumped so many hours into any Total War game and why I just can't stop. <laughs> so so it sucked mm. up all hours of my game. I think a lot of people can uh, can relate mm -hmm. to uh, the, 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 the idea that Total War is sucking up all the hours of the day and uh, I mean, it, it's impressive. You, you're spending basically the same amount of time that someone would spend on a full-time job just making mods. Uh, I had a lot of time on my hands at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know you, you you have a lot to show for it. I think 128 mods for Total War games on the Steam Workshop. Uh, yeah, uh, there were, actually would have been more if I didn't remove my like unit mods, which was like 20 extra, because I think it was an update on Total Warhammer, and I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna have much time to update these mods, because when I update mods, uh, I like and upload mods. I kind of promised to myself and everybody else that use it that I'm gonna keep it updated, but I couldn't do that for these mods, and I uh, just had to get them away and I know a lot of people got upset over that but I was like look I can but I did give them away to a lot of other modders to play around with so you can still find them on the Total War Workshop. <laughs> so so you talked about uh, uh, how uh, uh, you had an idea for something that you wanted to see in Total War 
um, and and you just you, you ended up just making it. So well, what's that process like? Like how 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 do you come up with the ideas for the different mods that you want to be making? Yeah, a little. Sometimes it doesn't need to be more than that, but sometimes it could also be like if I discover what I perceive as a problem. Or it could be just like 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 a stroke at the moment, kind of like my very first unit mod that I made, which was a shield and halberdier Empire States Troop unit. And I remember a lot of people kind of questioned, like, why do you do that? I mean, like back in the tabletop, and I was like, but who screw, screws the stats in the tabletop? I just want to have a shield and halberdier unit. <laughs> I was like, I, I just want to have a shield and halberdier unit. What was that? And there was this other guy who I. Uh, kind of got in contact <laughs> with two who I used one of his mods as a template. So then I could see how he had lined up everything. So it's like, aha, that's how you do it. That's what you need. You'd land you the tables, main units, yada, yada, and all that. And then you, um, I, I, again, you just followed it exactly how he did it. And then uh, I just, you know, rewrote some details. And I was like, oh, so that's you did it. And I remember I sent it to him. And he was like, yeah, all right, well, that, that works. <laughs> and for them, we just kind of continued going down, like, wait, how can I add more to it? Can I add abilities? Can I add new attributes, etc.? And, you know, um, and I just kind of got my answers as I went down. And that was just, again, just like a stroke at the moment. And then after that, I was like, hey, Chaos Berserkers are pretty cool, but they don't exist. So I was like, you know, I, I, I got to have to do them. They would be so cool. And it, I mean, that's basically how, how it works. It's kind of like, either you talk to one of your mates about it or you just kind of you sit there being in front of a PC and it's like you know what this could have worked a different way I wonder if that would be fun let's do it and it's like it's just kind of like that it could, could, it could just be in that or you just kind of want to add something just especially because you can really it's, I kind of feel like mods is kind of you know that's a great thing with mods you're just kind of free that way and okay so I know there are like a lot of cheat mods out there and a lot of people can kind of think like that why should you, you know why should you cheat and all that but I can think like I mean, everybody enjoys the game in a different way. So if that's what makes people, you know, enjoy the game, then why should they stop, you know? Yeah, the, the way you want to play the game is the legitimate legitimate way to play the game. You know, if if that means you only want to play, you know, uh, Vampire Coast all with, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> you, with, with Gunnery Whites, then that's fine. Or if you, yeah. you know, want to download a cheat mod, that's fine. Yeah. That's you. You play the game. It's a single player game, yeah. except if you're playing multiplayer, of course. But uh, yeah. you play the game. You how you, you exactly how we want to be. But also, if it's multiplayer, I mean, both of you kind of have like an agreement that this is how it's gonna be. So both mm -hmm. of you guys don't load the same mod. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't work. You, you've obviously made uh, uh, mods for a lot of different Total War games. You talked yeah. about Attila. Uh, you've done for Shogun Two, yeah. Warhammer, Three Kingdoms. Do you have a favorite Total War to mod? Recently. I just think Three Kingdoms is so fun because it doesn't require that much scripting. Everything is in like these campaign groups. And I think that is like so mm. liberating when I just want to make like tiny edits and I don't need to go and jump into writing scripts or anything. I'm not really that good at script writing. I usually kind of <laughs> become one of those <laughs> peasants that beg for <laughs> the, those that are good at scripting <laughs> to just write a short little script like that. But when you can just come to Three Kingdoms and just have like these very good temple like um, tables, like the camping groups to just make like tiny edits. I mean, that I feel that is great. Do you have a favorite Total War mod that you didn't make? That is a really good question. <laughs> but I, I mean, <laughs> when I want something you should try to make it myself but of course when you can have someone mm. make it too just like that then especially when i'm not that very good at reskinning i try i have a tendency to jump to, definitely to other people's vision because they're so good at it mm. i would say Ado potatoes empire reskin is just mwah, it just hits right there it's just right there. He, he just gets it and also which i've used on occasions his like themed uh, warriors of chaos reskins this is like one for corn uh nurgle etc I, I, I mean mm. i've actually used them on occasion too they're actually really good looks that also like like ridiculously good he, he's kind of like one of those a <laughs> like, little bit of a hidden gem in the workshop but i will also say the uniforms and heraldry bretone in particular is like I, I I don't even know where to begin with that one. It's just like I now when I've already used it, I just can't stop. And if you would ever stop updating that, I would feel like end of an era. You know what I mean? <laughs> it would be like yeah, yeah, it would be like end of an era. <laughs> yeah. If that was to tow Warhammer, I mean three kingdoms. I'm I'm just gonna. I want to say make them unique, but it will be too obvious. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. It, yeah, it's yeah, a great uh, mod. It, it is. They put like way too many hours on it. But I would also say puzzle illustrations. 
I will say that one oh. is really good, like too. It's and it goes really well together with uh, make them unique. So if you have them both, it works really well. So do you have any advice for people who are currently not making mods but would like to get into making mods? First of all, don't be too afraid of it. It can, it can seem like that you just sit like a peasant while these big modders, like demigod modders, sit and pump out stuff. Sometimes you only make it as hard as you want to make it, really. Like, if you want to make just something tiny, just give Carl Franz a 200 billion attack. I mean, that's actually really easy. <laughs> like, that mm. is actually like, really easy. You only <laughs> need to get the software for it which is readily available out there. I would also say, like, get, get your vision what it is that you want to make. Find your scope first. Don't go like, I'm going to create a new faction. Like, <laughs> don't do that. Mm. It's not going to work. I, 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 was, I was that kind of guy. I was like, I'm going to make the... I don't know, like the Mongols in in uh, Total Artilla, and that, of course that didn't work because it was scope was too big, and I didn't have the knowledge for it. And uh, speaking about knowledge, use assembly kit. Mm. <laughs> you, you start with assembly kit along with your other uh, modding tool, and use the global search mm. function. Like. I wouldn't be able to have make half of the mods if I didn't use the global search function because that's just how I gather knowledge if I want to like do yeah. something. I always have it beside myself when I sit and mod, so I can like readily available gr grind the knowledge to understand which tables I need to use. And because it can it can be a lot to add in, but it's actually not that scary. Just Probably the scariest thing is about the time it sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> not the time it sucks. That's probably the scariest part. I, I, something that uh, uh, people don't really think about is that um, if you're interested in getting into the games industry, modding is a great place to start. Because with modding, you can build up a portfolio of work that you've done. Well, that's, I didn't know that was a thing, actually. <laughs> All right, so do you have any hints, maybe, for uh, future projects that you're working on? Any new mods? I mean, I have a lot of mods that, like, a lot of pack files in my drive that's just sitting there and gathering dust. But, mm. I mean, recently I've been working on the Eight Princes DLC, um, and mm. I got out two mods on that. And I'm just still working on that. I was actually doing that before we started this uh, interview. I'm still going to make a patch <laughs> a patch update. And um, right, I guess fine. a little hint for that one is I haven't forgotten about the Nanman, the Nanman tribes. I haven't forgotten about those. Ah. I have some ideas for Eltharion the Grim and uh, Norska. Ooh. I'm not going to put into real details what about them, but one is bigger yeah. than the other. Well, I, 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 that, that, that's a good uh, teaser for things that may come. Um, yeah. All right, so we're gonna. If you're watching this on YouTube, we're gonna put a link to Governorin's uh, Steam Workshop in the description, as along with links to most of the other mods that we have mentioned here today. Um, I want to thank you for for coming out and doing this uh, interview. I, I I took time mm. out of your Saturday. No, that's all right. Sorry I, about that. I didn't really have much else to do <laughs> on my Saturdays. We'd just be modding most of the time. <laughs> Alright, I took away time from your from making mods to uh, to talk oh, no. a little bit about modding. That's great. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, <laughs> <great>. <laughs> now it was really cool to, uh, to talk to you guys. It was really cool. Absolutely. Um, and uh, if you, the viewer, have any suggestion for uh, uh, in future interviews that we should do, leave them in the comments or uh, in the chat or wherever you're watching this. Maybe send us something on on Twitter on or on the forums, whatever. Anyway, uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for having me. We will see you next time.